good to be with you guys today. It's good to be in the house of living God. Thank you for being here. Um, just kind of thinking back today about, uh, you know, just, just ministry together. And I look around and, and I know that, um, that in the past few weeks things have seemed to be going backwards for us. But that's the life of ministry. I just, I just want to, to know, um, you know, ministry and um, just doing what God wants us to do has its mountaintops and it has its valleys, and uh, how we process through it is really, really important, which is part of what uh, this message is about today. Um, I'm really, um, really glad to share it with you. Uh, I was thinking, David, Katie, you know, um, up here, nobody was around but me, me and you guys and, and uh, God and how he has just had his hand over you guys um, since I've been here. Not quite five years, but, but just doing this thing called Life Together, five years. You've had some ups and some major downs, really, really far down. Um, and yet, um, you know, she was on Facebook this week talking about, you know, things are progressing. And God's in it. And he has blessed you beyond measure. That little boy, I remember us praying, you know, wondering what your family would even think, uh, you know, and, and there was David right along with his wife asking God to give them another child, no matter what. And God has been with you through all of this. I look across the, the congregation, different ones of you, God's in this, you know, picking on them back there, but, but all of you, God's in it. Um, he, he's, he's helping you through this thing called life. What I want to talk about um, a little is, is, is just part of that process. Um, title of today's message is Good Reason to Continue On. Okay? How about that? Uh, good reason to continue on. There are four sayings of Jesus. They're actually instructional. They come from Jesus to be of good cheer. They come from, uh, they come from Jesus. And um, I, I, I'll be real honest with you. In fact, I think if we're honest with, the, what, with one another, perhaps one of the hardest things in the world to do is to keep on keeping on when you get discouraged. You, you know what I'm talking about? Of course you do. And we all do, don't we? We all get discouraged. Um, in fact, to be honest with you, these, uh, these are low places in, in, in life when Jesus comes along and makes this statement to be of... Uh, to be of good cheer uh, or to be of courage uh, is translated both ways in, um, uh, in the scripture. We're going to talk about that in, in, in a minute. But don't you, don't you just love it when, when life is like kind of down in the valleys? Um, how, don't, don't you just love it? You know, and you're, you're discouraged and struggling um, and you either read these verses or someone comes along and reminds you and God certainly has a way of reminding you. And you hear things like, like out of Philippians 4.4, 4, keep on rejoicing in the Lord at all times. You know, those times when you don't really feel like rejoicing. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, and, and he says, I'll, I'll say it again, keep on rejoicing. And, and one of the things in tonight's Light for the Journey, I was sharing with Terry that we're going we're gonna to ask our audience about is, what are the kind of things that you do to, to make this happen? You know, how do you, how you, you know when you're discouraged, how do, you, how do you get encouraged? Uh, I've been there. I've been there in ministry. Um, may, maybe well, some people look at it and, you, you know, you see things going in the wrong direction and they think, what, are you crazy? You know, do you, you know the proof's not in the pudding. But that's not, that's not always true. I, I've come to understand that as I've done this thing called ministry for almost 30 years is that you have the ups and you have the downs. And it goes both ways. And one of, the, one of the struggles that I have is, is that to remind congregations that to keep on keeping on, that God's not done. And one of the things that I know for certain is, is that God is not done with Oak Hills. In fact, to be honest with you, I have a hunch that what God is doing is, is getting things ready so that we, we will kind of knock it out of the park. It's coming, folks. There's another verse that says in, in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, that says, always be joyful. That, that's not so easy, is it? You know, when things aren't going well and things aren't, um, uh, Katie, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, she's back there smiling from ear to ear. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. By the way, hon, I, I didn't even think of you once when I was putting this together, but, but I'm glad you're here. 
okay? Uh, because if I had a thought of you, you wouldn't have been here. So I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad that all of you are here to hear this because I think we need to hear this from time to time. Because let's be honest. Life is real. In fact, Jesus said we will have discouragement. Several weeks ago, I preached a message. It all kind of goes together. I preached a message on relationship. It's a relationship and not a religion. I followed up last week with um, I, the issue that, um, the, an issue that actually I don't think anybody really talks about anymore, and that is faithfulness, okay, which is part of the relationship. Uh, today, it, I'm just kind of going on uh, right along the same track, if you, if you notice. This is how the Holy Spirit works, right along the same track. And so we're talking about, you know, in the relationships, when it's not going well, I really want us to have a, a good understanding of how to keep on keeping on. In fact, I want you to understand that's exactly what Jesus Christ needs you and wants you to do and encourages you to do and instructs you to do. Before I read the four, I'm going to read four scenarios where Jesus says to different individuals to be of good cheer or be of good courage. But before I do that, I feel like I need to talk a little bit about that, that Greek word. And uh, so we're going to do a little Greek study uh, first. The word, <coughs> the word is, is one word that means to have courage or, or to be of good cheer. Um, it's called tharseo. Go ahead and uh, put it up there, Tim. It's there. Are you having troubles with it again? It's not cooperating? Well, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. Be of good cheer, okay? <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, the Greek, I love studying the Greek. Uh, the, the, when you study the Greek, you have, they have it in a book. And what they do is they give each word a number, okay? And they do the same thing with Hebrew. And it's a dictionary, and it gives you, that's how you get to, you know, when you go through the King James, I have a, I have a King James, I also have an NIV, one for the NIV, and they give you a number for where that Greek word appears, and, and they, they do it numerically. Um, and so the number for this particular Greek word is, is, is uh, 22, uh, 2293. I know that doesn't mean anything, not a big deal. But, um, and, and you, you still didn't get it, huh, Tim? I see you trying over there, still didn't get it. Okay, well, it would have made more sense if you'd, you'd have seen this. Um, but this word, this word comes, is, is uh, tharsio, okay? And uh, it comes from a root word, which is, follows the numbers 2294, and, um, and, and, and it has a, different, a little different meaning. And the word before it is still dealing with courage. It has a little bit different meaning. Uh, but, but the word that Jesus uses, tharseo, and it means to have courage or to be of good cheer. And that word good in there is pretty important. It's part of the definition, to be of good cheer. And then in, in uh, the definition, it puts in parentheses, comfort. The root word that it comes from is thars, tharseos, which means daring boldness. So Jesus is talking about, you know, um, to have courage. He's not, he's not talking about having a bold, daring kind of courage. And, and, the, and the word that, that precedes it um, in the Greek that means sort of along the same time it, is to have an act of courage. Um, and and, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's pronounced thartheo, to exercise courage. But what Jesus says in these four, uh, uh, in these four places is, is to be of good courage. It, it's more of an attitude or a position for such cheer or such courage. It, if you will, it's a reason that you have. It's a reason that you and I have to keep on keeping on. Okay, does that make sense? Sorry to get you lost in the Greek. You know, it's all Greek to you, right? Um, but, but I just want you to understand, he's not, he's, not, he's not talking about an act of courage. He's talking about a, an attitude that you have and a mindset that you have to uh, a reason to have courage or to be cheered or to keep on doing and heading to where you're going. So let me, let me just share those four occasions that, that Jesus uses this term. There in Matthew, the ninth chapter, the second verse, I'm just going to read the verse. Um, and behold, they brought to him a paralytic 
lying on a bed, and Jesus, seeing their face, said to the paralytic, Child, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. Keep on keeping on, because I'm I'm announcing to you today, your sins are no more. The NIV, the NIV, if you read in the end, in, in, be, um, um, be of, of, of sound heart. Okay? But the better interpretation is be of good care, courage or be of good cheer. And he says to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. And there's cause later on where, where, where he, he often says this, and uh, what's easier to say, get up, take your mat and walk or or your sins forgiven because they understood for him to be like he is that he had to have sin in his life and Jesus looks at him and it's when he, when he says this he means you need to keep on keeping on you don't it's not a time to stop it's a time to be of good cheer take heart keep on you're on the right track be of courage be of good courage Another place, we're going to talk about, we're going to come back and talk about all these in, in just a moment, but I want you to know where they come from. Another place in, is in Mark, the 6th chapter, the 50th verse. Here, they're all out on, the, out on the sea, and it's night, and Jesus comes a-walking in the darkest part of the night, and they think he's a ghost, and it says they're sore afraid. And that's what I'm about to read, and here's what Jesus says. For they all saw him, and they were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said, Be of good cheer. I am. Do not be afraid. Okay? In another version it says, It is I. But he's talking about the God, that that God is with him. I am. And he says, Be of good cheer, or be of good courage. Do not be afraid. And then he says, when he's about to go to the cross, and he has this long discourse, we like it, and John records some of the things and thoughts as Jesus is talking to his disciples. And uh, he says to his disciples, as he's sharing with them, in the 16th chapter of John 33, he says, I have spoken these things to, to you so that you might have peace in me. God wants you to have peace. No matter what's going on with you, You can have peace. That's how you can have that joy without ceasing. Is is that you know that you know that God wants this for you. And so he says, I've spoken these things to you so that you might have peace in me. In the world, you shall have tribulation. There it is. But be of good cheer. Same Greek word. Be of good cheer. Or be of good courage. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Lastly, it's in the book of Acts, the 23rd chapter, the 11th verse. (coughs) Excuse me. And uh, he's actually talking to Apostle Paul. He appears to Apostle Paul. This is Jesus. I find it interesting. And Apostle Paul has had this, this, this unique encounter with Jesus Christ. And uh, there in that 11th, uh, that 11th verse of chapter 23, the Lord comes to him, and, and the Lord, uh, and following, uh, the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so you, almost bear, you must also bear witness at Rome. Be of good courage. Take heart. As you have done, and, and by the way, he was on trial, and he was testifying to the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and uh, they, they, were, they were drilling him. And he actually caused a ruckus because he started talking about the resurrection, and that's how he got out of it. But God came to him. I'm sure he was discouraged. I mean, who wants to be on trial? Amen? Katie, who wants to have surgery? You know? You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Who, who wants to have the, the bug? You know, who wants to have a cold? Who, Linda, you know what I'm talking you know, Who wants to have cancer? But, but I'm telling you folks, I mean, who wants to be in the valley? 
But, but, but that's real life, and Jesus said we're going to have it. But what I want you to know today is that Jesus wants you to be of good cheer, to take heart, to be of good courage, because you have a lot of reason to keep keeping on. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why I'm not getting discouraged, although I have. Um, I've had lots of reasons. Actually, the ministry can probably be some of the more discouraging places because you don't, you don't expect to find troubles or hardships there, right? You, we, we expect come in and we expect everybody to love us. We expect everybody to agree with us. We, we don't expect people to come alongside and, sit and make it hard for us, but sometimes that happens. It's happened to me in a couple different churches um, where I was doing things for Jesus. I remember my first, the first church as a layman, I did my first VBS. I remember the night before the VBS, I've shared this with you, sobbing. I was so discouraged by the fact that everyone kept, you know, kept giving the report that, well, the last, week, last year we only had six kids come to VBS. And I just knew that I needed to keep on keeping on because Jesus asked me to do this. And oh, I'm so glad that I did because when you keep on keeping on is when you get the victories. Okay, never grow weary in well doing. Scripture teaches us that. So let me let me just let me just talk about those those the four things that that I picked up on that we have a reason to continue on. The, the first thing that I, I would share with you is that our sins have been forgiven. Oh, what a reason to keep on keeping on. There, there, there's no more sin, folks. The sin problem has been dealt with. Jesus, with his blood and by his sacrifice, has taken care of that which cuts us off from God. And then we no longer are separated from God, but we are with God. Hallelujah. God loves you so much that he took care of something you could never take care of yourself. He paid a debt that you owed that you could never not owe. Jesus did it for you. No more sin. Uh, in Revelations, he writes this in Revelations 1, these three verses. He said, from John to the seven churches in Asia, my grace and peace be yours from the one who is, who was, and is coming from the seven spirits who are in the front of his throne and from Jesus the Messiah, the witness, the faithful one, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of, over the, the kings of the earth to the one who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Hallelujah. And has made us a kingdom of priests for his God and Father. Be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. There, there's a reason to keep on keeping on. Amen. In your lowest lows, God has paid the price for you. You matter that much. Well, let me keep on going. It's not only no sin, but there's no judgment. There's no judgment. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in, in, in union with the Messiah Jesus, who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. You will come before God, and you will stand there, and you will belong there because Jesus has paid your price. And no one is going to be, and the accuser can come along all he wants, but you can stand there with great boldness in, in the throne rooms of the heavens and know that no one can bring charge against you for Jesus Christ has paid the price. Now, how's that for a reason to keep on keeping on? Well, let me share one more thing about, uh, about this reason that, uh, that we have that there's no more sin and for Christ has paid the price. There's also no hell. Romans 5, 9 says, And now that we have been justified by his blood, how much more will we be saved from the, the from wrath through him. Jesus did it. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all to save you from the pits of hell. Now that's reason to keep on keeping on. No matter how and what life throws at you, I just I just want you to know to keep on keeping on. Jesus says, be of good cheer. Be of good courage. Take the Spirit, for you have reason to keep on trusting Him. Amen? Secondly, a reason to continue on 
is that we have been granted victory. Hallelujah. You know, I read the end of the, I read the, end of the book. <laughs> we win. Hallelujah. We win. We have victory. We have victory over Satan. James 4, 7 says this. It says, therefore, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will run away from you. We have victory over our enemy. Hallelujah. We have victory over death. First Corinthians. I, want, I read this at funerals at the graveside. I, I, I rarely do I miss the occasion to read this. I like how it actually ends. Talk about keeping on, keeping on, and having reason to keep on. Listen to this. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 58. Four verses. But when this corruptible shall be put in, corrupt, in corruption, uh, and when this mortal shall be put on, put on immortality, and when then will take place the word that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. Remember, Jesus took care of that. Hallelujah. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ so that, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not without fruit in the Lord. I like that verse. It says, do not grow weary in well-doing, for you will reap a harvest if you keep on. That's paraphrase, okay? Go back and read it for yourself, but that's paraphrase. Pastor Carl's rendition. We have victory over death. Well, let me, let me go on, uh, talk about, uh, as I move through these, these, these four occasions, I just want you to know that we have victory over sin, we have, uh, that, that we have cause because there's no more sin, and that we have victory, um, that God has given us what we need to have victory. The, the, the other thing that I want to share with you is the reason to keep on keeping on is that we are not alone. We're never alone. Never, never alone. God is always with you, my friend. I know, I know I've experienced myself when I have felt all alone. Isn't it amazing? You can be in a crowd of people and feel all alone. I have been guilty. This is not to my credit. I say this, and, and my transparency is to help you because I have a hunch I'm not about I'm not alone in this, and um, that I've been guilty of thinking and, and crying out to God that, you know, nobody cares but me. Have you, ever, have you ever done that? Sure. Folks, Jesus comes along. He's got another word for us. He says, be of good cheer. Be of good courage. For we're never alone. Hebrew writer writes in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, he says this, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. Hence, we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What could anyone do to me? Amen. Really. No matter what, and isn't that, isn't that the cool thing? We're saved by grace, and we're saved by Christ's blood, and when we receive it, and sometimes our emotions takes us places that are really no place to be at all, like we're all alone, when we're not really. God is with you. Never will he leave you. He says, his promises are true. Never will he abandon you or forsake you. Well, let me move on. Uh, we're also never without supply. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will fully supply your every need according to his glorious riches in Messiah Jesus. Now understand that sometimes God doesn't give us what we think we need. Okay? Have you been there? He doesn't always give us what we think we need. I can go down, and I've done this to God. I, well, God, you own all the cattle on a thousand hills, and we need to do some ministry, and we need this, and we need that, and we need this, and we need that to get the job done. He doesn't always give us what we think we need. He says he will supply our every need. He will give us what we need to really get the job done. And sometimes we think we need more than he supplies. But he does. 
He is our supply. Another reason to continue on is that um, in closing, just kind of dealing with the Paul perspective of this, is, is that we have been called or commissioned. I, I would share with you, long before I ever come as your pastor, God brought you here, most of you. Some of you have been here a long, long time. Some of you have come in since I've been here. Okay? But what I know about for all of you is that God has led you here. God has led me here. I've been called. Willie, you're here. You, you wouldn't say this is a mistake. You know. You know. John, you, you've been doing this a long time. You, you and Nellie. But you know, the coolest thing about all this is that God has asked you to do this. God believes in you. Shannon? Yeah. You're not here by mistake. It's not a coincidence. It's not a happenstance. I, I remember Judy come in. She came in and, and, and God brought, brought, brought she and David and she, she could sense the spirit and she knew. She just kind of knew. Talk to her. She'll give you her testimony. She just knew. She's also known that God, God has wanted to do the ministry that, that she's involved in helping us in. I knew it needed to happen. I, you know, and I had been praying, God, I, I need help to do this. Because I hadn't, I hadn't done, any, done anything quite like what I knew needed to happen here. And so I needed help. I, I have no doubts. Okay? What, what, what I'm driving at is, is Christ came alongside Paul and he said, Paul, all this stuff is happening to you. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Not, not only are you got, have you witnessed about me here in Jerusalem, but I got other places I want to take you to where you will be my witness in Rome. You're going to the chief city and you will be used for my glory. And all, all I'm trying to say to you is, is that, God, um, you, uh, that God has called you. And, and, and if he's called you and he's called me, and we're a team, by the way. We're a team. I, I was just praying for my, my praise team just this week. So blessed by them. They're a team. They, Debbie, they help us get her done, don't they? We couldn't do it without them, could we? God has brought the right people into the right place. But what's that really mean? I, I, I just want to talk about that for a moment. That means that you are the one who possesses, possesses the right gift mix, the right understanding and perspective. You're the one um, that, that you, you get the purpose of what it takes to get it done. Think about it for a moment. There is nobody in all of, in, in, in all of eternity who is like you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm going to let that soak in for a moment. Are you getting me? And God has allowed you to be born into this generation. In fact, when I think about it, reaching, reaching uh, the young generation, we're still part of the answer. Just as, as, as frustrating as it is and as frustrated as we are is how do we reach them and try to figure it out, we're still part of that answer. We have what it takes. Uh, when I'm with young people, Judy says to me all the time, see, and I don't, I have to be reminded of this, Judy, from time to time, but she said, Pastor, young people just are drawn to you. I don't see that. Because I don't see that in myself. And what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to open your eyes to the fact that when Paul was there and Jesus come along beside him and said, be of good cheer, I, I've not only asked you to be my witness here, but I've, I've asked you to be my witness there. And nobody could have done that but Paul. And nobody can help the church go where it needs to go today but you and I. We were made for this. Okay? That's, that's a reason to celebrate, isn't it? <laughs> God chose you. Your, your witness doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out door knocking. Not everybody does that with me. Okay? 
Witnessing is way bigger than that. Way more than that. Now that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you shouldn't always be prepared to give an answer for the, the reason of your hope. If I was coming along and say, Why do you go to this church? You'd be talking to me, I hope, about, well, Jesus Christ is there, and Jesus Christ is preached there, and the scriptures, and, and, and we just hold to him, and he meets my every need. Right? Every one of you could say that. Always be prepared when the questions come. It doesn't mean you have to go out and door knock with me. That's not for everybody. Amen? So your witness doesn't necessarily mean you have to do door knocking, although we should always be ready to give an account for our hope. But what greater testimony, think about this, than when everyone else would give up by now, you are the one who is of good cheer and good courage and continue on. The very reason that you're here is your testimony. And your testimony is, is that God is asking you to. In the good times, in the high times, and in the low times. Amen? I'm a part of this. Because God has called me. Amen? Amen. The reason you did it can become your testimony. Well, they left just a little bit too early. How about that? And I'm not even feeling well. Are you encouraged? Good. I want you to be. But more importantly, Jesus wants you to be. Okay? Be of good courage. Be of good cheer. It's an attitude. You know, it's kind of a mindset. It's it's a way of looking at, at, at your circumstance and know that you have good reason to keep on keeping on okay um, there are people who are in churches that are unhealthy and uh, they won't give up no matter what but that's not the case here that's not the case here at all the case here is is that we've got to get our team together we've got to get things in order and uh, it takes time and it's happening and uh, we're going somewhere and God is up to something. And we have great reason to be of good cheer. Okay? I, I just want to remind you. Um, I look around, small crowd today. Those of you online, you can't know that. But, but it is. It's not a big crowd. Now, it's not the 50 that we've prayed for and had so many times. It's a lot, a lot less. But it's okay. Be of good cheer. Be of great courage. God's not done. God's just getting started. And I'm looking forward to what the Holy Spirit wants to do in this place. Never been a part of a church where this is an indictment against my ministry where God has been so much in charge. Those of you who are on my team work with me, you know it's true. There's a lot of things that happen around here and you guys are questioning it and think, well, why are we, you know, and it's like God's got this. God's got this. He knows what he's doing. And I'm in it. How about you? Are you in? Yeah. 